Cast. Those lessons were taught along the way. Yeah. It also was just a lot of learning from seeing. Yeah. Right? Seeing a man like that dedicated to his nation, right? Dedicated to his God, his family, and his nation. And uh, I just wanted to be like that. Hi, and welcome to Deep Leadership. I'm your host, John Rennie. Well, I hope all is well with you today. This is another special Wednesday morning episode brought to you by our sponsors, Jeremy Clevenger Fitness and the Sasquatch Flag Company. Both of these sponsors help me bring these shows to you each and every week, so I encourage you to click on their links below and check them out. I have another great show lined up for you today, but before we get started, I just wanted to remind you to check out the leadership books I've written on either Amazon or my website, johnsrunny.com. This year, I'm offering a new way to purchase all of my books for a discount. I've bundled the books into what I call the Qualified Watchstander series, and you get all three books for 15% off the individual prices. This offer is only available on my website, so check it out if you're looking to step up your leadership game this year. Also, I wanted to remind you that Deep Leadership is ranked as a top 100 management podcast in the U.S., and I wanted to thank each and every one of you for listening in each week and sharing these episodes with your friends. You have helped this podcast grow into a top performing show. So thank you very much. Well, that is it. Today, we're going to be talking about service before self. And my guest is Brian Jodas. Brian is the host of the Pick Up the Six podcast. He is a husband, father, and proud son of a retired U.S. Air Force Lieutenant General fighter pilot. We sat down to talk about the lessons he learned from his father and how he applies them each and every day to his family, at work, and in his community. This was an inspiring conversation that I know you're going to love. So are you ready to dive in? Let's get started. Welcome to Deep Leadership. Leadership is a people business. That's the philosophy of your podcast host, John Rennie. As a former Cold War submarine officer who spent 20 plus years leading businesses in corporate America before starting his own manufacturing business, he knows that leadership matters. Leadership matters. Are you ready for some real world actionable advice from John as well as his expert guests? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. The show starts right now. Welcome to the Deep Leadership Podcast, and I'm joined by Brian Jodas. Brian is the creator of the Pick Up the Six podcast and founder of Pick Up the Six LLC. He is a former TV broadcaster with a passion for reaching people through storytelling. He is a husband, father, and proud son of a retired Air Force Lieutenant General who taught him the importance of one simple message, service before self. Brian believes that everyone's story should be heard, and we share them best when we connect people to something bigger than themselves. Now, I'm excited to have him on the show to learn from his experiences. So, Brian, welcome to the program. Man, John, it is awesome to be with you. We flipped the script tonight, right? You were on my show a few weeks ago, number 135. So, folks want to go back and listen to me ask you a bunch of questions, they can. And now uh, I'm in the hot seat. Looking forward. Absolutely. Yeah, the roles are reversed. It was great being on the podcast. I love your show. and, uh, And it's great that you're able to join us today. To talk about you know your life and your story with our listeners, so um, it's fun to it's fun to do this. So uh, I like being a guest uh, because there's less preparation to do. So today you didn't sure. have to prepare anything, so that's good. I've been pouring over notes of my entire life all day <laughs> to get ready for this, John. I take well, this serious, man. Well, you're ready to go then. Yeah, we're ready. All right, sounds good. Well, so I want to start start off. I mean, as I introduced you, you know, you you said your dad was an Air Force general. Uh, what was it like growing up as a military kid uh, with a father who was a fighter pilot that, yeah. you know, was a general, that's a big deal. So what was that like? Yeah. And, uh, you know, what were some of the lessons that he taught you? What are the things you learned, uh, being that military brat growing up in that environment? I mean, it's pretty great, right? Like your dad flies fighter, <laughs> like, right. Exactly. Pretty, ba- pretty bad. Dad's ass. pretty cool. Right. <laughs> yeah. Pretty cool guy. Uh, you know, listen, man, uh, just very blessed and fortunate I'm the oldest of three. My dad is one of two boys. And, um, you know, we just, we as a family just knew about service, right? And just something that we all kind of were a part of. You know, he joined the Air Force right out of college, was commissioned into the Air Force, uh, you know, went through his path, was able to get a pilot slot, you know, trained up, uh, uh, went to the Air Force, flew F-111s, you know, later flew F-15s for the bulk of his career. Um, F-15s uh, in the desert some, you know, then a squadron commander, 
you know, was an ops group commander. I mean, he's commanded at a lot of different levels and, and ultimately retired in 2013 after 36 and a half years as a three-star lieutenant general. And, you know, we like to jokingly refer to him as Eagle One and uh, did pretty good for himself, right? Um, but he was a guy that grew up in New Jersey whose dad was in the Navy in World War II who went back into Korea. And so, you know, that path for him, I think, was was pretty evident. And uh, it was great, man. We got to we had to travel around uh, quite a bit, um, but we also got to spend six years when I was a kid, fourth grade through ninth grade, not too far from where you and I physically sit today in Goldsboro, North Carolina. See more oh, Jones, okay, yeah, Air Force Base, right? And so we kind of grew up there, and uh, and got to man just fall in love with jet noise and be around fighter <laughs> pilots and grow up in squadron bars and and all that good stuff, man. So it was an absolute blast and a privilege, really. What a cool, uh, what a cool experience for. You know, I, I I look at that. You know, I think that I think travel and being exposed to one of the things about military bases in general, though, is you get people from all over the country, all over sure. the world, and so I think you get to see a bigger world when you're younger, when you're when you're in those kind of roles. You know, like as a military uh, child, and I think that you get exposed to a lot of different things with with that, and you see the world as big, maybe bigger than, yeah. than yourself. Is yeah. you think that has had an influence on the way that you have lived your life? I mean, it's a good point. You know, uh, I'm the oldest of three. My middle brother was born when we were stationed at um, at um, Upper Hayford Air Force Base in, in the UK, right? So we even traveled around overseas at an early age. When I was in the sixth grade, dad did a one-year remote to Osan Air Force Base in Korea, right? So we got to go hang out over spring break there for a year. Wow. One of the things that I have thought about sort of later in life is that ability through that, that environment to meet people and to have to adapt quickly. And I think try to blend in isn't the right word, but but sort of adapt to new environments. And I, you know, I, I just I think it's something that that has prepared me later in life to be ready for just different scenarios, right? Or meeting different kinds of people or being able to communicate from people from New Jersey and then boom, next minute you're in North Carolina. It's kind of a different, you know, kind of group of folks. Yeah. Culture culture stuff. Absolutely. Um, So, yeah. So I think so. Yeah, I think so. That's that's outstanding. So we mentioned in the introduction service before self, something your father taught you. What, What did that mean to him? What does that mean to you? I mean, I think it's just you're committed to something that's bigger than you, right? It's sort of what what many folks would would say, and if you're faith-based, sort of I'm third, right? Mm -hmm. You know, God first, others second, self third. Service before self are those that quite literally, like you did, sign that piece of paper, right? Give away a ton of your rights Mm -hmm. at that moment, right? To volunteer, to serve in the military, you're putting something above yourself. And so I think service before self is kind of that. It's this idea that, first of all, I'm not the center of the universe, Right, the world's better when I remove myself from the center of the universe. It's better for me, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and uh, I'm part of something bigger than me. And, and service before self, it sometimes means sacrifice. Sometimes it means hardship. Sometimes it means not always doing, you know, the things that are easy. And for us, it, you know, it was just it was it was being around that, and it was learning by a lot of examples. You know, it's funny. I I don't remember necessarily a lot of guys sit down and we're going to talk about these specific things. Mm. Those lessons were taught along the way. Yeah. But it also was just a lot of learning from seeing. Yeah. It's right? seeing a man like that dedicated to his nation, right? Dedicated to his God, his family and his nation. And, uh, and just wanted to be like that, right? And just mm. wanting to, to follow in those footsteps in, in some way, shape or form. And, you know, my there, there's three of us, uh, my myself, my middle brother, not down the military route, but we try to do everything we can to to support and give back in other ways. Our youngest brother, major in the Space Force, Lieutenant Colonel Select, by the way, boom, what up? Nice. Oh, so, yeah, which is awesome. He's got that news. And so just trying to carry, carry on that legacy a little bit. And I think that starts from watching a guy in our grandfather who lied about his age to join the Navy. Yeah. Right? World War II starts off, yeah. goes into a recruiter's office. He was born in 1925, and I think his military ID says 1923 or 24. <laughs> I had to gain an extra year yeah. to sign up for that thing. And that, that this service before self, like, of course it is, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I knew, you know, when I was on your show, I think I mentioned both my grandfathers served in World War II, and and that's definitely a major influence on me. In fact, yeah. you know, in the studio right now, you see a ship right here, and that's the USS Frost, my grandfather's ship, who 
Uh, he served in uh, World War II and uh, just uh, amazing stories of battles with German U-boats and, you know, what he went through and, you know, knowing the technology that exists back then and the, and the, the conditions he faced uh, in, in winter storms in the North Atlantic and this little destroyer escort, you know, he's, yeah. yeah, this guy was a hero of mine, you know, and he, oh, yeah. the influence. Oh, yeah. Our, our family really does influence who we become. And I think it sounds like you had a similar experience with your grandfather and your... Oh, my God. I mean, John, like, you know, some of the fondest memories of my life are, are, are growing up in those squadron bars and also just hanging out with my grandfather. And my mom's dad served as well, too. was in the Army Air Corps. But we spent a lot of physical time with my dad's father, who was in the Navy, and just sitting around the table, and, and he would tell us stories. And it wasn't always the gruesome acts of war and right, all that stuff right. those guys had to endure along the way. He was in the Pacific, USS Terry, out there for Iwo Jima and those mm -hmm. battles in the Pacific. But even just the, the little stories of, of him sharing about, you know, they've got some rest, and uh, they're watching a movie on the deck of the ship one night. They're probably in transit and passing a jug of wine around, and he hands it to the next guy, and it's his commander, and he thinks he's in big trouble. <laughs> and the guy takes a pole and passes it on. So, you know, just... I just, I'll always remember stuff like that. And, yeah. um, cause it means a lot, right. That, and that's, hopefully you do, right. That's your legacy, right. That that's part yeah. of your lineage and you're proud of that. And man, I mean, just, yeah, I just, I cherish those moments. And I, I think that shaped a lot of what my dad wanted to do. And, and then what my brothers and I, and, and our families try to do too. I mean, you know, we don't just put those American flags on the wall back there, mm -hmm. right. Without knowing exactly what it means. You don't put the one that's folded up in that case that he flew over the desert, without knowing what it means and, and being fortunate that he came home, right? When guys that my dad served with didn't. Yeah. Um, so so that means something to us for sure. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. So you were a local sportscaster in Texas and Illinois. And uh, what about that experience? Uh, what, what was that like? And then how did that lead you into what you do today? Yeah, it was awesome. I, you know, I graduated from college, uh, went to Appalachian State, which is in Boone, North Carolina, was a broadcast media guy. As a kid, I wanted to be a sports center anchor. Like I, I was the kid that at 12 and 13, while most were watching cartoons, I legit was like watching sports center <laughs> and watching games, like studying yeah. those guys. And I loved Keith Jackson and Chris Berman and just all those guys. And so I wanted to be a sports broadcaster. And so I went to college for that and uh, got out of college and had, you know, no job offers to be a sports broadcaster. <laughs> Right. Like I had no experience. I had some, you know, some radio experience, hosted a sports radio show at App State. Shout out to Dyson J, the sports nice. crazies. We had a blast. But uh, but quickly learned, man, you got to be willing to put the work in and figure some stuff yeah. out. So I ended up in Wichita Falls, Texas, got a job at a local TV station as the production assistant for the morning news broadcast. So I was showing up to work at three in the morning. I was mm -hmm. editing a bunch of tapes. I was running cameras in the studio. And I walked into the sports department after my first week and I said, hey, uh, I'm working from 3 a.m. to about 1 p.m. And after that, I'm all yours for free. Can you just help me learn? Can I be an intern? Can I just learn how to be a how to be a sports reporter? Like, uh, you know, and, uh, and Chris Oregon and Aaron B. Jackson took me under their wing and taught me a lot. And then eventually I was able to become the weekend sports anchor there, met my wife there, girlfriend at the time. Right. We moved to Illinois after a couple of years. We were in Illinois for about five years where I was the sports director at a TV station. Got to cover a bunch of great events. We covered the Rose Bowl when the University of Illinois played there against USC, got smoked in like 2008, I think. And got to do some neat things and learned a lot about people and relationships and storytelling. And we we called a lot of game highlights, right? You know, I, you know it's Brian on sports. You know, I'll show you the highlights. We do that. But we also got to meet people in the community, share their stories. And that was a stuff, especially in local news, that I thought always kind of resonated. Mm -hmm. they, they can go to ESPN for the big highlights. They came for us to hear the stories about the local teams. Right, right. They get to know the players on the basketball team or the football team at the University of Illinois. And uh, man, it was a blast. We had a great time with it. My wife and I were ready for a little something different, a little different pace of life and to start a family. So we did that until about 2010 and then, you know, shifted into the media content creation, you know, kind of digital media space after that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's interesting you said something that's really important that you said, you know, you you when you you got your degree and you realized that, you know, it was hard to find a job, you know, doing what you wanted to do yeah. and you ended up taking a job and then yeah. you 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 sort of forced your way into a yeah, career. That's a great way of explaining it. And, it was like and I think that, like we're doing this. Yeah, and so I think a lot of people come out of college and they think that well, it's you know life's going to be easy, right? I want to be, I have a dream, I have an aspiration, I'm just going to do it. I'm just it's going to it's going to work out fine. But a lot of times you find yourself where you've got to do something extra, you've got to yeah. do something special, and uh, and and it sounds like you you 
put in the extra work. You, you like said, do teach me without pay so that I can do my dream job. And, and I think that's a great message for, for people to hear that, that sometimes we have to do the ugly to get to where we want to go. And sometimes that can be difficult and it can and require a lot of uh, perseverance sometimes and the frustration. And it seems like they're never going to yeah. end. Uh, yeah. but not a lot, not a lot of pay, like a lot of sacrifice. Right. You got to just right. like, you got to be willing to put yourself out there. And then you also just, sometimes you just got to know when to go, Yeah, you know, like get moving. Um, and like, yeah, it paid off, be, not in a big way. Right. So when I finally became the, an actual sports reporter there, the news director was like, Hey, great news. We're going to elevate you up and actually, you know, give you a sort of yeah. a real job here. This is 2003, 2004. -ish. We're going to pay you 17 grand a year. And I was like, Sweet. Hey. I'll, take, I'll take it. <laughs> I mean, so like, you know, it wasn't, you know, big glamorous life, but amazing things came out of that. Right. Yeah. Man, yeah. Died, right. We got two great kids now. Like, yeah. so just. Yeah. You got to be willing to put yourself out there. And you're right. Like, sometimes you got to be, I didn't want to be cutting tape and running yeah. cameras for the morning newscast, but it was a path, right? It was a foot in the door. It was an opportunity and you got to seize it and jump on it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I speak to high school students a lot. And one of the messages is don't, don't be a nub. And it's an expression from the military, which is a non-useful body. So no. I tell people, don't be a nub. And the idea is that when, wherever you go, be be a contributor, be a yeah. net contributor to, yeah. to and, and you're going to find that things will work out for you. You know, do the, put in the extra hours, be willing to volunteer, be willing to do the extra, and then things will tend to work out for you, you know, in trying to achieve things in life. There are way too many consumers. And what I say is be, be a creator, be a contributor, not a consumer. Yeah. And I think that's a, I think it's a big part of, uh, uh, you know, and it fits in with the, Service before sell, you know, do things, help others, you know, yeah. before you're, you know, enjoying leisure time, if you will. So I just wrote down out. nub. I'm taking that with me for sure. And that's a great. <laughs> you can take that. You yeah. can take that. My son is brand new in the Navy and he's a nub right now. So I, <laughs> I remind him to get qualified every day. Sure. Really sure. important. Don't sure. be a nub. <laughs> so it's good. But um, so pick up the six podcast. I've been on it. I love the show. Tell us, uh, tell us what the title means, so people yeah. understand. Yeah, yeah. You know, we started in uh, February of 2021. So and God's been good to us. We've had a great run here, and near 150 episodes in those two, two years. Uh, we moved to the Cary area in North Carolina in 2016, and I in a uh, in a few months after that, I joined a men's leadership organization. It, it, it paints itself as a workout group, but really it's a men's leadership organization called F3. The three Fs are fitness, fellowship, and faith. It's changed my life. And throughout that organization, um, when we're in the middle of working out, if a guy's lagging behind or somebody's behind, we always talk about go pick up the six. Mm. And obviously being around my dad, right? I mean, I've got distinct memories of, of him talking about flying sorties, right? And, you know, who's got my six, right? And so right. as you know, in sort of military parlance, the six is behind you, right? Who's got your back? Same thing in that workout group, right? If we're going to pick up the six, we're going back, right? To get the, the guy or gal that's sort of lagging behind. And so I originally started with a very small podcast. It was six minutes. I was interviewing just local guys that I knew that were part of this workout group because I thought they were good guys and I just wanted to hear their stories. And we do it very fast after the workout. It's 8.04 in the morning. I'm here with so-and-so. These very quick interviews. And was doing that for a while and I thought, man, I'd really like to take this skill set as a broadcaster, which, you know, I'm not professionally doing it anymore, but knock the dust off of that, mm -hmm. right? And put something around that. And I started looking around thinking about, you know what? We've kind of built something with this pick up the six idea. I'd like to expand it. And there's a couple reasons why and, and a couple things that sort of spurred me to do it. One, I use my dad as a great example. 36 and a half years in the United States Air Force, Lieutenant General, amazing career. Had you not served with him, people don't know who he is. Right. It's just right. But that guy did tons of stuff on behalf of our nation that some of you might not ever even know about. Yeah. Right. That yeah. he was a part of. And I thought, you know what? There's a lot of people out there that have gone, have gone above and beyond through service, purpose, and impact. So these three pillars we want to talk about. Let's share their stories. And then another thing happened was I was watching Lone Survivor one night, right? This movie about Marcus Luttrell. Operation yeah. Red Wings, which, by the way, is my birthday, so I just always felt the connection. Mm. Or Navy SEALs, right? They get embedded in the Afghan Hindu Kush, right? Get compromised. Three of them are killed in action. One survives. And the United States of America and some of our allies move heaven and earth to go get that one asset. And I'm, uh, it's a Friday night. The family's asleep. I got a bourbon. I'm like, we're putting on Lone Survivor. Let's get after it. 
and watching the movie. And we get to the scene near the end, and probably not a spoiler alert. Hopefully, I don't. You know, I know it's a oh, spoiler alert, now. right? Yeah. Spoiler if you have spoiler alert, yeah, right. Where a payphone helicopter picks Marcus up, right? This navy, this bigger than life Navy SEAL, and in the movie, the payphone helicopter sort of looks over his shoulder, gives a little nod, and then they take off and they rescue Marcus from this Afghan village. Which, by the way, we had that guy on our show, Jeff Spanky Peterson, because I was like, "Well, wait a minute, who's that guy?" Mm. who's the helicopter I ever yeah marcus latrell if you're in sort of the military community if you've seen that movie like people know that name but i'm like who's the dude that flew the bird that yeah. saved the dude? right that guy's yeah. picking up the six and then god led me to jeff spanky peterson lieutenant colonel peterson who flew that payfock who's part of an air force reserve crew john that was six guys right they got gunships above they got all stuff but it's this air force reserve crew with spanky right he's got his co-pilot his FE, his flight engineer, this is 2005, was in freaking Vietnam. Oh, wow. Like his PJs are like fresh out of med school. So this crew, you're like, this is wild, yeah. right? But yeah. they're trained up, they're ready for the fight, and they go get this guy. And I was like, those are the stories we're going to tell, right? And he's our second episode. And it's oh, stuff wow. like that, right? That's why we did. So that's what picking up the six is about. And it can be... Military members, right? We've talked to first responders. We've, we've talked to entrepreneurs, leaders, uh, uh, nonprofit leaders, right? Anybody really that we find that fits the mold of service before self, strength of purpose, right? What were you designed to do or community impact? And we've just been having a blast with it, man. We had a great time talking to you about uh, yeah. your military service, right? And how, how you're sharing that with leaders and entrepreneurs because you continue to serve even though the uniforms come off. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. Leadership skills are like any other skills. You need to practice them to get better at them. Best-selling leadership author John S. Rennie knows this. That's why he's written a new book called You Have the Watch. It's a guided journal for leaders designed to take you through an entire year of leadership training. By the end of the year, you will master 50 of the most important leadership skills. If you want to have a greater impact on the results and people in your organization, go to youhavethewatch.com and pick up your copy today. This episode is brought to you by Jeremy Clevenger Fitness. As a high-performing leader, you know that leadership isn't about telling people what to do. It's about leading by example. And for most people, the one area that they're lacking when it comes to leading by example is their health and fitness. By improving your health and fitness, every other area of your life improves. But how do you get and stay fit as a busy leader? Well, you do what you've always done. You hire the best person for the job. Don't struggle on your own. Put Jeremy Clevenger on your team. Jeremy will work with you to take your physique, mindset, nutrition, nutritional habits, and more to the next level with his step-by-step, all-inclusive coaching program. Now, I've worked with Jeremy for the past year, and I'm in the best shape of my life. If you want to step up your game, reach out to Jeremy at apexperformancesystems.com to find out more and get your initial consultation scheduled with him today. This episode is brought to you by the Sasquatch Flag Company. The Sasquatch Flag Company is a family-owned business in New England that builds hand-carved American flags from seasoned white pine. Each flag is hand built and each star on the flag is hand hammered and chiseled no two flags are alike they offer a variety of flag designs to honor the police military firefighters dispatchers and search and rescue personnel to name a few these stunning handmade flags look great in an office a studio the back porch or above the fireplace mantle they make the perfect gift for the veteran first responder or patriot in your life now i love these flags and i've been giving them as gifts for years and i was a customer long before they became a sponsor of the show. I can't recommend them enough. So if you're looking for that perfect, uniquely American-made gift to give away, or if you want to treat yourself, go to sasquatchflags.com and get your order in today. I talk to a lot of veterans and we, you know, we have a mission when we're in and when we get out, we really struggle. Uh, I know I struggled for about seven years to figure out what I wanted to be when I grew up because I achieved my lifetime dream. At well, your identity oh. is so connected to that. Yeah. I and so it. what do you do? And and so many military veterans need a mission after the service. And I think that's a big yeah. thing that's missing. And they, they struggle to find it. And then, but, but usually in, in, in most cases, it's something where they can be doing something bigger than themselves because mm-hmm. that's what they did in the service. They're looking for that same way to contribute, uh, to 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 the world like they did in the military, you know. Dude, take take Evan and the guys from Black Rifle Coffee, for example. Mm-hmm. Right, they've not created a coffee company. 
they've created like a movement. Mm. Think of Jason McCarthy, right? Special Forces, Green Beret, he owns Go Ruck. Mm, He's yeah. an awesome dude, right? Uh, I think they make the best sort of rucking backpacks around. I've got multiple Go Rucks. Shout out, love those guys. Not paid, <laughs> not paid sponsors. Um, Should be. That, the, yeah, that guy hasn't created a backpack company. He's created a movement, right? An outdoor yeah. fitness movement. Yeah. Um, so you're right. And it's just, uh, sometimes it takes a little bit longer. I think our hope is to share some of those stories, right? Because man, you guys have, you've done so much on behalf of the nation. You got such great skill sets. And when you see those guys and gals flourish afterwards, it's amazing. So we love talking to folks that have done cool stuff like that too. And, and, uh, man, it's just, it's, just, it's inspiring, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it is. And and I've had a lot of, of them on my show as well. And I learned so much from hearing their stories and seeing what their mission is after the service. You know, I see a lot of great, uh, great stories of people really trying to, again, they're, they're putting service over self, even after their mission is done. They're trying to find their mission in, in the, in the civilian world, if you will, helping right. others typically. So and, yeah, and, that's a good and, point. And, yeah. yeah, no, and it could be, look, man, it could also just be examples of like, we interview a guy named Dean Ogan. He's a, he lives in Raleigh, local guy around here. He's from Tennessee originally, I think. And Dean owns a catering company. And when COVID hit, uh, there were a bunch of families who were now stuck at home with their kids who they relied on the meals from those schools, mm. right? Like not everybody is as fortunate as you and I and so many other people where, okay, our kids are quarantined. We're home for, I don't know, a year. We'll just get groceries, right? Th that's a beautiful gift. There's thousands of families across our state that that wasn't the case. Yeah, dude stepped into the breach, right? Got something going. They took their catering company, Rocky Top Catering, and they created basically a nonprofit arm that that started making food pick up for families. Your mm -hmm. kids quarantined, right? Yeah. Nobody's in school right now. Rely on that meal. Sometimes it's the one square meal those kids get a day. Show up here and we got you covered. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, that's that's pretty incredible selflessness. That guy yeah. had a lot of capital online to make that happen. Absolutely. But just doing the right thing in a moment. So our, like, my hope is like, and I try to just do this and I hope that our listeners do too, is just, just keep your eyes open for those moments because yeah. you never know when they're going to come up and it might be just something little. Yeah. 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 That's a great point. And it's great, great to hear that the kind of guests that you have on the show. And I do encourage listeners to look it up, pick up the six podcast, great podcast, great show. I love what you're doing. And I really appreciate you featuring these stories. I think it's really important to, for, to highlight the people that are actually stepping into, like you said, stepping in the fray yeah. and being willing to, uh, to, to do, do big things. And I, and then that's fantastic to hear. Um, so I want to talk to you about F3. Sure. Uh, it's a men's leadership organization. You mentioned it's faith, fitness, uh, fellowship and faith. Tell us about it. Is it nationwide? Is yeah. it local? What, what is it? What do you guys do? And what's, uh, what's the mission? Well, it's another thing I love to talk about. You know, we tell these guys, come join us for these free outdoor men's boot camp workouts. So you can get a good workout. And, and again, like you said, really is a leadership organization. I'll tell you the mission statement of the organization is to plant, grow, and serve small workout groups for men, and here's the kicker, for the invigoration of male community leadership. Mm -hmm. And what happened was there were some guys in Charlotte about 2011 that were doing this Saturday morning workout. Just It sort of organically started up, and they're like, how about on Saturday mornings, group of just guys get together, just dudes being dudes, and let's get a good workout in. Because uh, contrary to so, sort of Sometimes what they might want us to think that sort of men are lone wolves and we kind of go by the beat of our own drum. Like that, can I use expletives on your show? Absolutely. That's bullshit, right? We're not <laughs> lone wolves. Men are black right. animals that at our best together and we thrive together. So these guys started up sort of this, this workout and two of the guys saw, I think, an idea. I want to take this thing a little bit bigger. So they split off and they eventually started what we eventually called F3. And, and the idea is pretty simple. You get men together in your community nationwide. We've got sort of what you'd consider chapters, right? We call them regions all over the country. We even have some international Germany, South Korea. We've got a few in Africa, right? So it's, it's really spread a lot over the last, you know, 12 years at this point. And the idea was simply just get these guys up and get them active and in community, right? And they can be bonded together by doing this 45 minute workout. And in doing that, yeah, men start getting in better shape, mm -hmm. right? They're doing something hard first thing in the morning, which I'm a pretty big advocate for. Like, just let's get up, get after it. And if you work out in the afternoon, 
man, that's great too. I'm happy that you're active. For me, I, I got two little kids. I got a family. I got a lot happening. I got to do it at O-Dark or else it's really just not going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. So get these guys going in fitness. And then what they realized was, well, now they want to hang out more. Now they want to get coffee. Now they want to develop real, real like depth in relationship. Mm -hmm. And with that comes that living third component, which is the faith piece. And the faith piece in F3 is not a religious, you know, affiliation or anything. It's just, it really is a, a, a belief that there is something bigger than you out there. Mm. For me, as a Catholic Christian, right? Okay, my faith is then manifested in all those other things. But I know that there's something bigger than me and I'm not the center of the universe. We kind of started with that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And if you do that, then other things happen. So now men start giving back. They start doing community service projects together. We just had a local F3 region that was partnering with a group in Raleigh this weekend. And those guys were going into a man who's visually repaired, visually impaired, ripped all his carpet out and put flooring in. Mm -hmm. Right. So now guys are doing stuff like that. And so it's incredible. Uh, F3Nation.com, if you don't mind me saying, is the website. Yeah, please do. Yeah. There's there's a map on there. You put your address in and it shows you all the workout locations that are right around where you live. And we're look, we're not everywhere, mm -hmm. but we are constantly expanding. And I think we um I think we've got like, I don't know over 4,000 daily workouts or something. I think it's on the website too. I mean, you know, and like I live in Cary and Apex. We've got a Carpex region, Cary Apex, right? We got South <laughs> Cary. We got yeah. Apex. We got West Cary. You got stuff headed towards Nightdale, Gardner. Like we got stuff everywhere. How about Wake Forest? You got Wake Forest for sure. Yeah, the Wake Forest, Wake Forest guys are going strong. Most of those workouts are somewhere between 5.15 and 5.45 a.m. And they usually last about 45 minutes. There's run groups, there's rug groups, but the core of it is sort of a 45-minute totally free workout. And that's the best part, right? It's open to all men, right? So we want all guys to come out. It's 100% free. There's no cost to attend. There's no membership fee. There's no dues. You're probably going to buy a few F3 shirts, so just consider that. <laughs> yeah. If there's no pressure to do that, it's always outside, rain or shine, which I think is key. Like, and I love going to the gym and lifting weights, but I also know that getting outside and getting dirty and like getting rained on, it's just... We need it. As men, we need that. Like, that's in our DNA. Uh, and it's peer-led in a rotating fashion. So not only do we expect you to consume, my brother, but we expect you to create mm -hmm. and lead. Right? You're th and maybe some of these guys never get a chance to lead. I, you know, I don't know. So they get a chance to lead. And then the, I think the secret sauce of what we do is every workout ends in what we call a circle of trust. And it's a chance for guys to maybe put the shields down for a second open up, be vulnerable, talk about things that are going on with their life and build that depth and relationship. Mm -hmm. And uh, that for me has been what the real game changer is. Because when as a man, when you can get in a pack like that and, and be reminded that guys are going through similar things and lean on guys that have been through stuff, ideally we hope that we're strengthening those men, men up because ultimately that leads to just stronger communities, mm -hmm. right? And we've got an epidemic going around our country right now where men are getting isolated the enemy gets implanted in their brain and they're doing the one unthinkable thing that we can't undo, right? Which is take their own lives. Far too many men. It is, a, it is an epidemic across our country and we got to stop it. And I think part of what F3 is doing by getting these men in real relationship, getting them, man, invigorated and feeling good, ideally we can bring some of those things to an end. And so, dude, it's been, you can just probably tell by the passion in my voice. <laughs> how much it's meant to me. I try to tell yeah. everybody about it. I'll drive to Wake Forest to work out with you up there anytime you say the <laughs> word and we'll make it happen. Yeah, that sounds good. You know, I think and we're going to think... Goofy nickname too. So you're a military guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Your call sign, we give every guy a goofy nickname at, at most of the time at his first workout too. So there's always some fun with that that happens as well. Okay, usually we get called bubblehead or something like that being submariners. So <laughs> there's, always, there's always a couple things and you got to be careful about what you tell the guys about yourself because obviously they'll use it against you, so... Right. Yeah, that's exactly it. You know, it's it's really important what you say there, because I think, I think especially with, uh, I see with social media, especially what we saw during the pandemic, is mm -hmm. that there is a lot of isolation. People yeah. uh, have isolated themselves. Uh, they might feel like they're trying to connect with social media and things like that, but ten, ten, pe ten, people tend to be lonely. Yeah, and we are for social sure. creatures, and yeah. we need to be together with other people. We need to interact. We need to have people hold us accountable. We need people to say, it's okay, or, hey, I'm going through that same thing as mm -hmm. well. 
Uh, because like, if, like, I, like you said, there's way too many people taking their lives. There's way too many people that, uh, feel like there's, there's no hope. Yeah. And, uh, and when you, when you're around other men like this, you know, I'm speaking it from a, from a male perspective, but when you're bonding with other men, what you realize is that you are not alone. That everyone is going through the same sort of struggles that you are and having that accountability group, having yeah. someone you could talk to is really essential for us to, as humans. To, yeah. the, that's what we need uh, to be, uh, to, you know, to, to thrive. And yeah. uh, I think that's from what it sounds like the F3 is, is providing that to, to these men. Uh, and it sounds like a fantastic program. And you nailed it. And we, we use a, an acronym, OYO, right? So sometimes we'll tell, a, well, if you're leading the workout, I'll tell everybody, all right, we're going to run over there and you guys are going to do, you know, 20 push-ups OYO on your own. Just do 20 push-ups. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sometimes we're counting cadence or whatever, right? But sometimes I'll just say 20 push-ups OYO, run over there. We also have one no OYO, right? You're not on your own, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's sort of the key to all this. Shout out to our lady friends too that are listening, right? Uh, FIA, females in action, female counterpart to F3. So if you oh, got nice. females okay. that are listening, right? Yeah, that's yeah, out yeah. there too. Not as many sort of regions and chapters, but a ton of them out there. And so love what the gals are doing there too, because it gives them a chance. Yeah. To do something similar. Yeah. Look, man, I think there's, I think there are plenty of opportunities for guys and gals to sort of mix and Orange Theory does that. And, you know, even yeah. Go Ruck experiences do that. I, I think there is a time and a place where men just need to be in community with other men. Yeah. Um, no. Because I, you can just, I, you can I, just I, talk about things at a different level yeah. and the vulnerability just comes down. Um, so, which is awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, um, this has been really great. Uh, what kind of final message would you like to leave with our audience today? Man, well, listen, I, I love what you're doing. Um, and for us to be able to come together and just, man, talk about great stuff. I mean, it, it's been, it really has been an honor and a privilege, you know, and, and I think back to, you know, what should, what could you have done in life and all that? And I just know that God's got a path and a journey for us. And I hope that the stories that we're sharing uh, are part of that. I think they are, and I feel very charged that they are and just, so I'm just thrilled for the folks that have come along the journey with us, right? Um, and just, I'm grateful for the folks that we've been able to talk to and get to know. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's just such a blessing, man, because we've been doing this for a couple of years. Like, I've just got to meet some really incredible people. And that's developing even into new, new friendships and relationships. Last week, I was in Aiken County, South Carolina, with my buddy Lowell Copper, former Green Beret, with a Marine veteran, a couple SEALs down there, just great guys, and a bunch of gals, too. And a dude that we know wanted to work out for 22 hours for veterans, mental health, suicide prevention. And he worked out for 22 straight hours. He was on a stair climber and we're a bike. We're taking some bathroom breaks. Wow. She had bro 22 hours. I mean, no joke. And so I got to be a part of that. And so just, man, just, it kind of goes back to that point before, like lean in. If you want to do stuff, get going, keep your eyes open and, uh, and just, just man, take advantage of the opportunities and just do it with a, with a full heart and, Check yourself out of the out of the middle of the uh, of the universe every now and then too, and it, it you know, yeah. And I think when you say service before self, you you're putting yourself out there, and it's not all about you, right? And then you get to you get to work on something that's bigger than you, and yeah. get out of your own bubble. I think that's really important for people to do. Yeah, and there's so many folks. You know, I, I'll tell you this maybe my sort of parting thoughts. We're living in a pretty tough time, John, where you watch the regular media and it's a shit show. I mean, it's just a disaster. <laughs> it is. Everywhere you look, it's a disaster. Everybody hates everybody. We're all terrible, right? Like, good God. But here's the best part. It's not really like that. It's not at all like that. <laughs> On the fringes it is. And, and yeah. for, you know, for like major media and for clicks and all that, I guess it is. But it, it's not like, it's the people you talk to. Yeah. Right. It's Commander Kirk Lippold who commanded the USS Cole the day he was attacked by Al Qaeda in 2000, and the way he tells the story of his sailors saving their ship. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's the folks that we've talked to over the last 144 episodes as of this week that remind you that even with all those differences, even with difference of religion, race, sex, origin, political parties, the real American spirit is still alive and well, and it is. Folks that are dedicated to their community, right? It's folks that are willing to look outside themselves. Like, that's happening. You guys see it. You see it every day, right? And it doesn't get reported on the news. So I think it's our duty, me and you, right? You guys listening. Folks come listen to our show to continue to remind people uh, just how good we are, right? Just what brings us together. 
and uh, and we can unite behind service, purpose, and impact on our show. That's what we'll try to do. Nah, that's fantastic. Well, how can people find out more about you, uh, the podcast, and what you what you do? Yep, we're at uh, pickupthesix.com. You go there. Uh, you can see our shows are the first thing they're on the website, right? You can go back through all the archives and we've got show pages where you can learn a little bit more about the guests, see pictures of them. We're on Spotify, Apple, iTunes. You know, we should be on most places where you can listen to podcasts. We're on YouTube, right? So really just go look for Pick Up The Six. Uh, but we're right there, pickupthesix.com. It's got all the links to all that other stuff. Uh, same thing on Instagram. We're pretty active there, at Pick Up The Six. I'm at Brian Jodis. So you can also follow what I'm up to, see the things I like to eat, check out my kids playing soccer, all that good stuff too. <laughs> and uh, and we greatly appreciate it. You know, anything you can do to help help spread the message that we're doing, just like folks do with your show, it really does help us a lot. And you know, when when John at the end of the show or maybe before it or whenever he records and says, like and share and subscribe. Yeah. It, guys, it helps in a big way. So it makes a difference. If you haven't subscribed to this podcast that you're listening to, do it first <laughs> and then head over to ours and hit that subscribe button too. And <laughs> And uh, we won't inundate you with a bunch of nonsense. We'll share good stories with you. Absolutely. Well, that's fantastic. We'll put links in the show notes for all those resources. And we'll even include the F3Nation.com because I think that's... Uh, for Hook them up, that man. Heard, the, heard that story and are interested in doing that. Um, <clears throat> that's a great resource as well. We'll put the link in the uh, link in the show notes for that. Uh, Brian, this has been fantastic. I appreciate you coming on the show, sharing your journey, sharing what you've learned over the years and, uh, and what you're doing to pay back. And I really do appreciate that. And I appreciate what you're doing on your podcast. So thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for sharing your journey. It's my pleasure. It's been a lot of fun. I love what you're doing. I'm a fan for life. God bless you. Uh, good. Thank you very much. I love what you're doing too as well. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for listening to Deep Leadership. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and share so we can continue to build a world with better bosses. Until next time, this is John Rennie saying take care and lead well. Thank you for listening to Deep Leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all you do. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information and updates, please visit our website at www.deepleadershippodcast.com or johnsrenny.com. Until next time, take care. Hey there, fabulous souls. I'm Stephanie Baklaan. And I'm Eden Alpert. And we're the hosts of the brand new podcast, Unapologetically Fab. Get ready to join us on an amazing and real journey as we dive into life after 40 and own it. We're all about changing the narrative, leaning into who you are, and living a life by your own design. Join us as we embrace life unapologetically and redefine success. This is Unapologetically Fab. An electric cast production. See you there. Electric cast. Welcome to the Reverie Channel, where entertainment knows no bounds. Live concerts, on-demand music, documentaries, and short films, all in stunning HD. Now on Roku TV, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire, immerse yourself from home. And on Android and iOS for those on the move. Support creators with crowdfunding donations. Fuel their creativity. Join us in shaping entertainment's future. The Reverie Channel, where every view, every donation matters.